We're going to design a controller for this two tank system. The thing that we're trying to control is this level right here at the top. And we have a pump that's our actuator with the fluid that flows up into a first tank. And then it fills up this tank. Um, and then the gravity drains into, uh, cascades into the second tank. And then that one uh, fills. And then this one also drains into this large reservoir that is again then pumped uh, back up again. Okay, there's also a valve here that we could use as a disturbance, and that can direct water directly into the second tank if we want it. Okay, so let's um, just talk about our instrumentation. We'll draw a little block diagram here. We have a level transmitter, that's our sensor, and then a level controller that sends a signal to the pump. So if we just sketch this out, we have a set point. I'm going to do a plus minus there. And then we have our measurement, our PV value, with our sensor. Okay, so our sensor is going to be our level transmitter. We're going to design a controller, a PID controller. And then we have our pump. And that sends, uh, this is going to go to our, uh, this is our system. Okay, our two tank system. And that affects the level. And that's going to be sensed by the sensor. So this is going to cycle around like this. Uh, we're going to design the PID controller. First of all, we need to characterize the system. We'll do that with an FOPDT model, a first order plus dead time, where we obtain KP, tau P, and theta P. Okay, so the, here's our uh, system. And there's some starting code that you can uh, you know, just start with if you'd like. Uh, this is all posted at uh, this address, apmeyer.com. You go to PDC, and uh, this is going to be under the assignments. And we're going to be doing the level control. Okay, so there you can see the schematic that we just discussed. And the first step is to step test with a graphical first order plus dead time fit. And so we have some sample code here just to get you started. Uh, this has some of the physics of the first this two tank system. You see, you have two heights there, two differential equations, and it avoids overflow. Okay, and then you have pump that turns on at uh, you know to point two. We're just going to record the solution and uh, save it as a text file and then plot it. Okay, so there's some just starting code. Now I'd recommend if you're going to get grab this, always use the Git code down there in the right. It'll remove all the formatting and just uh, put it in there as a text file for you to copy. Okay, so it's going to generate this figure right here. So the very first thing we need to do is generate a first order plus dead time approximation to this. And we're trying to fit the relationship between the pump and the height too. So this is going to be our output at the top. We have our delta y. Uh, that's going to be equal to 0 0.16. And then here is our delta u, our input. And so our KP, that's just going to be delta Y over delta U. Okay, 0.16 divided by uh, 0 0.2. Okay, and this is going to be meters per, um, you know, this is a uh, the pump flow. Um, this is the fractional pump. So it's just going to kind of be unitless um, there. But there's our gain. Okay, and then we go with a time constant. Um, time constant and time delay. So the very first thing I'm going to do is look at the inflection point, okay, where that traces down, where the step started, was right here. And so there's just a little bit of delay, not much. It's about zero. Maybe, um, you know, this is going to be something like maybe uh, one to, you know, five seconds. Okay, so I'll put down about two seconds. Okay, and then the, uh, we're going to calculate 63% of the way there. So the amount of time to get um, about 63% of the way to the new steady state, you can go 0 0.16 times 0 0.63 and find that exact value. Um, and then this region right here is going to be tau p. That's our, uh, our time constant for our system. So that's going to be, um, you know, don't forget this step happens at about uh, 10 seconds or so. And so that's going to be about uh, 30 seconds. Okay, and uh, so I just have an approximation there. If you do a graphical fit of that, uh, here is the first order plus dead time fit. And you can see we're trying to approximate this uh, blue dashed line right here. 
and it looks like it's pretty close. Okay, so there is our fit with uh, those three parameters. Now we also want to do a doublet test as well. Okay, and if I just use those three parameters, uh, you can see it, it kind of misses in this area and that area as well. So I might need to re-optimize it uh, for, for that one. Okay, so I just took my pump up and then I did a doublet. I went up and down and then back up again. This is called a doublet test. And uh, it helps us characterize, you know, somewhat of the nonlinearity of the system. If you have different response coming up than down, or you have um, different gains in different regions, basically it's going to be nonlinear if kp, tau p, and theta p change in different regions. Then we say it is nonlinear because the FOPDT model, this one is linear. And if it doesn't fit that in all regions, then we say it's nonlinear. So it can be, this one's, you know, not extremely nonlinear, but you can see it doesn't fit, um, you know, very well. Okay, and um, we also might have higher order dynamics too that might not fit a first order. So it still could be, it still could be linear, but higher order. So I can also use optimization um, in this as well. So if you want to try out some of the optimization code, you just take the data file that's produced by that step response and then come down here to, uh, let's see if I can find that. Okay, first order plus dead time optimization fit. So you can just use this code right here. Let's show the source code. And then you'd use this second one. Um, let's see if I've got that here. Okay, so here it is right here. Just use this, get, use the git code and run it with that data file and it's gonna produce something that's going to try to fit uh, like you see there. Okay, and um, okay, so here's my fit. I started off with, uh, you know, slightly different parameters, but when I use optimization, I can see that I get, you know, just a little bit better fit there of the FOPDT model. Now, when I do that same thing with the doublet, Okay, it changes the parameters a little bit there. Okay, but I still get uh, you know a little bit of a gap here and a little bit of a gap here. So even with optimization, it wasn't able to improve it just because structurally the model is just a little bit um, off. Okay, and then the next part of this assignment, so I'm just giving you kind of the overview of this, is once you obtain these uh, parameters like this from the doublet test, is the next one is to use tuning correlations. Tuning correlations to turn these three parameters into PID tuning parameters or PI tuning parameters. Okay, I'm just gonna select the PI. We're just gonna select a proportional integral controller for this. And this talks about how to implement that. You have the IMC tuning correlations right here. Uh, and, and then you also have the ITIE tuning correlations. So both of these are good uh, starting points. The set point tracking for ITIE if you have a controller where the set point is going to be changing frequently, you would want to use that one. But if you have one that has just a constant set point all the time, and it's going to be more disturbance rejection, then you use the second one. Okay, and don't forget to add things like anti-reset windup. Okay, more information is there. And let's just go to the response on how this uh, PID controller works. So now instead of uh, us determining the pump, like that, we're going to have a set point for our system, and then we'll see if it can automatically adjust the pump to try to meet the set point. Okay, so here is our first graph. I'm just gonna focus on the one at the top. Here's our set point right here. And you can see the process variable, okay, it comes up to the set point, but then I change the set point down, and then it follows it. And then you can see I do a big step up here, and then I want to characterize the performance here. So this one has a little bit of oscillation. And so I can look at, for example, the rise time. Uh, and that's going to be about um, you know, 60 seconds or so. I can look at the peak time. Okay, and that's going to be about 100 seconds. I can look at the overshoot ratio. So these are all ways to quantify the controller response. This is going to be B, and this is going to be A. And so my overshoot ratio is going to be B divided by A. 
And then I'd have to go further to see something like a decay ratio. I'd have to look at this next peak right here and then do a decay ratio would be equal to C divided by B. Okay, it looks like this does a fairly good job at dampening out uh, some of the oscillations there. And here I have the controller output. So this red line, this is what the pump is doing during this time. So this is what the PID controller told the pump to do and then implemented it and came up with that level. Now you can see that the controller output for a PID equation, the output is going to be a combination of the output um, initial, okay, that's just when you turn it on, plus KC times the air. And now the air is going to be my set point minus my PV value. Here is my PV, and there is my set point. So at every time step, that's going to be my air. Okay, and then we also take our KC divided by tau i times the integral of the air. And then also for the derivative term, it's going to be minus KC tau d times dPV dt. Okay, we don't have a derivative term on this one, so it's just going to be this equation right here. I did uh, calculate this just if you want to show it. If you do want to add derivative, you can. Uh, but just for the purpose of the assignment, I just did the proportional and the integral only. So here is the air. This is the set point minus the PV, and that's the air. This is the integral of the air. So you can see that adjusts, um, kind of like it's a uh, output initial adjustment. Uh, when you get to the new steady state, it ensures that we don't have any offset. And then here is the derivative of the PV as well. So if you were to add the derivative term, uh, you would be able to add that into your PID equation. Now this is a lot of code that I'm not going to go through the code line by line here uh, because there are a lot of examples that you've already done in this class. Um, and so I just want to point you to some resources. If you want to get some PID code, let me just highlight that again. Um, you can see an example of a PID controller here. Just come down to the bottom and you can select show sample code and that will give you an, a starting point for some PID code if you want to use that and then manipulate it. Um, the other one that I mentioned already is to uh, this first order uh, plus set time optimization fit. Again, there's some code there. You can easily use that for your problem um, as well. Okay, so just write down there their source code for each of these. Okay, and then uh, I'm going to go back to the problem because I also put a zip file with um, all of the source code that I used for this. Uh, so don't uh, you know necessarily rely on this. Try to get as far as you can. You can refer to this if you need to, but obviously do your own work. There's a solution with a uh, tank zip file right there. And that one will contain um, a lot of these, the part one through part four that I just showed you and uh, how to run those. So for example, if you want to open up the PI controller, I'm going to run this with Python 2.7, but you can do 3.6 uh, plus, okay? And there's the response that I just generated. Okay, so uh, good luck on this assignment. Uh, again, we're kind of going through a lot of these case studies right now. And if you look back on the assignments, you'll see that um, you know this is level control, but up next is the exothermic reactor. We'll have a type one diabetic, and then we'll get into some valves and sensor design as well.